all right in today's video we're going to learn how to do this after effect edit style in CapCut pc just like this all right guys let's get started so we already have our project settings done we're going to bring in our video just drag and drop in the timeline and I'm going to turn the volume down. I'm not going to be using it. And right from the beginning, when you look at the edits, we're going to have a white background. So this is what we're going to do. We'll go to media, go to library, and you can go to background. You're going to see it as white. I already have it on my favorite. So I'm going to go there and just drag and drop in the timeline. And most of the time, the white background is going to come in a video form. As you can see, I cannot stretch it more. So this is what we do. Let's just go to this side, click on freeze. Make sure you selected the white background. Then we can delete this part. That's the video part. And with the image part, we can stretch it and make it any length that we want to use. So this is one trick that I keep doing all the time. Now I'm going to put the video on top of the white background to start working with it. The next thing we're going to do the drop shadow. I'm going to show you this one trick that that I use when it comes to video files. So with this selected, let's just reduce it to somewhere 90% for now. Let's make a duplicate of that file. Select the top one, press V to disable it. When you go to effect, I'm going to have my own favorite, but you can find yours on video effect. When I go down and I drop blur to it, right? See what it's doing. Now, when I click on the video file, go to adjust. When I turn it black and we're trying to create this drop shadow, see what happens. Let me go to basic and take saturation down. We cannot see the blur effect. So now I'm going to show you the trick of using this. Let me take everything off. So what you have to do is go to media, go to library and click on background. You can find so many backgrounds you want to use. Most of the time you can go for black. So let's just drag a black background on top of that file. That's selected. I'm going to make also that one 90%. So it will be the same size with the video file below. Now there's the trick. Select the two file optional alt j to create a compound clip of it now with that selected we can go to effect and we can drag blur on top of it if it's not working close cup cut and open it again sometimes it's a glitch that happens it will work perfect now let me turn this on and show you guys v to enable it you can see when you look on the sides you can see the drop shadow we're creating nicely around it when it's too strong for you you can click on it go to blend and turn down the opacity a little bit on that side and it's going to give you a nice drop shadow all right so whilst editing this video i realized there's an easy way of doing this let me show you guys so we already have this video in the timeline where we make a duplicate there's the duplicate file let's disable the top one and click on the down one so what we can do is we can click on this go to adjust go to curves and we can just pretty much make it dark just like what we were doing so far just make this dark then we can make a compound clip of this down file now when you go to effect and you drag blur on top of it it's going to give you the same look so we don't need to bring another file to add it then we can just turn this on by pressing v and we'll have the same drop shadow vibe so i just wanted to show you guys whilst i was editing this video all right let's go back to it now this is what i'll do i want it to be sitting right down here so with that selected i can go to the top and on the y axis i can bring it down a bit and move it on the x axis a bit on this side now we're done with it so we're going to make these two files one file select the two optional alt g to create a compound clip of it now this is why i made it 90 percent when i go all the way down to somewhere 50 and later on make a compound clip and zoom in it's going to destroy the quality when it comes to cup cut 90 is pretty much close to 100 i'll show you guys now all we have to do is just increase it to fill the screen and we're not going to lose the quality i'll play it at the starting frame of it make a keyframe on transform then we can go for somewhere 30 frames then i can just reduce the size of it this way take it to the top and reduce it a bit more now i can just right click on this show a preset and i can go for either quad ease or cubic ease with this preset let's try this and i like this one so i'm gonna close it and we have this nicely done these are some of the tips and tricks we cover weekly on our live session on school.com you will also get access to a complete CapCut course that walks you through all the advanced editing 
techniques. The link will be in the description below. Feel free to check it out. All right, let's get back to the tutorial. Now we're going to bring in our rectangle shapes. Pretty easy with cup cuts. Go to text and let's drag the full text in the timeline. Let me stretch it and make it the same length as this for now. And for us to see what we are working with, let's click on the background, go to adjust curves and let's take it a little bit down on this side. Later, we'll take it all the way to the white. Then select the text file and let's just put in a dash, increase the font size, go to transform and increase that too. We just want it to cover the entire screen. Now when we go to the top, we can go for the first color we want to use. So with this, I can go for a blue color, strong blue color. Let me take it to this side. And now we're going to start playing the trick. That's selected option or alt G to create a compound clip of it. Make sure we are somewhere in the middle so we can see how it's going to look like. Go to video, click on mask, add mask, and just use the rectangle shape to select exactly the size of your rectangle shapes. And the first one, I'm going to place it somewhere down here. And the round corners, I'm going to add a little bit to it to keep it round on the edges. When you zoom in, you can see what it's doing on the edges. Let me click here and show you. You can see we have this round corners around it. So now let me just take it all the way to this side. I want the first one to be sitting somewhere like this. Now we're going to animate it to come in. Take your player to the starting frame of it. That's selected. Go to basic. And let's just go to transform. Now let's go the same 30 frames intervals, just like the video file. Go to video and let's drop on transform once again. Now let's go to the previous keyframe we created. When you have this activated, once again, it's a glitch. Click on mask and click on basic again. It's going to take it away. Now we can just take it all the way down here. Make sure you don't move the X axis. So we just want it to come right from this side of the screen. So now we're going to have this basic movement, right? Let's change the curve. Right click, show a preset. And we can go for cubic is just like the video file. But let's try quad is and see how it's going to look like. Perfect. So I can also go for cubic is. And I think I'm going to use cubic ease for this and close this. Now we are done with the heavy part. Let's do the front part. And mostly we're going to place all of them below this video file. So let me just start doing that. Place it below the video file. That's selected. Make a duplicate of it. Option or alt and drag upwards. Now still on that part, let's go to video, mask, and let's change the position of it. Before we do that, let's double click on the compound clip. It's going to take us inside the compound clip. This file selected. We can now change it to a different color. And when we go back to the timeline, it's going to look like this. Now let's just go to video. Make sure you select the mask file. And with this mask, I want to reduce the size of it. That's the trick of this. So this is going to look like this size. And I'm going to place it somewhere here using the X axis. Just move it. We don't want to move the Y axis. We want them to be in the same line. Now when I take it here, you can see what it looks like. And when it comes to cap cut and compound clips, it looks a bit different. You can see we changed the color, but it's not affecting this very compound clip. That's one thing you need to know about cap cut. That's done. Let me do one more. Just drag and drop on top of it. Double click on it and let's change the color. To this very color close that go back to the main timeline and now let's go to video and let's just move it and select a small size of it so i'm going to use this parameter to select a small size of it and then i can use the x axis and move it towards that side now when you look it's going to have this look and when it comes to this animation we don't want all of them to be coming in at the same time so with this i want these two to come in at the same time but the yellow file i'll take it somewhere here and go somewhere three frames and drag it to that side so now when you look we're gonna have this look nicely coming in now i'm gonna do one more in the next link just to show you how to go about it and the rest i'll be pretty much fast on that part so the yellow selected let's make a duplicate and drag it to the top now double click on it click on this file and let's just change the color to this deep green go back to the main timeline that's selected let's go to video on mask let's move it down on the y axis so i'm gonna take it pretty much to this lane and i'm gonna use this for the rest of them so i can move first of all on the x axis or let's just stretch it a bit using this parameter so to this size then i'm gonna use the position x and move it towards this side 
And because we have the animation done already, it's not going to ruin it. It's going to have the same animation. Now with that, I want it to come in two frames after the yellow file. Just drag it to this side and it's going to give us this very look. Now from here, I'm going to do with the rest of the files and it's going to be the same process and I'll be fast on that part. So we are done now. We're going to have something like this when I played back just to show you guys. It's going to have this nice animation on the screen. So if you want to add more, you can go ahead and add more colors. This is about just playing around the colors to make it more colorful. Now that we're done, we're going to turn the background all the way back to white again. Make sure you click on that. Go to adjust and let's take it all the way back to the white color. I feel like it's too white so I can bring it down a little bit towards this side. The next thing we're going to bring in a Keza to move one of the files to the next lane. So with this, I'm going to use this very file. Let me scroll to the top and drag it to this very side. And for you to get access to the Keza, you can go to free pick and you can just type in Keza. It's going to bring you so many options just like this. Then you can just download it, take it to photo P and just break it down. And you're going to have something like this. And I'm going to use just one of the Keza. And when you look at this, it looks pretty nice with a black border around it. So that selected, go to video mask and select add mask now i can use it to ship it around the keza i want to use now go to basic and let's just reduce the size of it and let's just drag it to where we want to click and now we're going to play this trick we want the keza to start coming in when this file or this rectangle shape that we want to click and move we want it to move exactly with that so let me just start playing around it let me see where that file is this is the file that we're going to pick and move it to the next lane so that i can bring the keza on top of that file take your player to the starting of that frame then let's drop on transform we can go somewhere 30 or 35 frames ahead and drop second one on transform so this is going to be the final destination let's take it back to the first keyframe we created and let's just move it to somewhere here on the screen and now it's going to look like this and come in nicely now right click show a preset and let's just go for quad ease with this from here, you'll just be playing around it and check the speed if you like it. I feel like it comes in too fast, so I can move the keyframe a little bit to this side and check how it looks like. Now I like the speed. So now we're going to play this trick with it. When it comes to this side, it's going to act like it's clicking and then moving it. When it clicks, the size is going to reduce. And now when we change the size of it, because CapCut, we cannot move the anchor point. It's going to look weird. So we're going to play this trick with it. This is the two files we're going to work with. This Keza and also this very yellow file. Now I'm going to take my play edge just after the second keyframe on the Keza. Take it to somewhere here and select these two files. Now command B or control B to make a cut on that side. Select the two, option or alt G to make it one file. Now with CapCut, we can go to the three dashes, click on that, go to guides and rulers and let's just bring in vertical. Go once more to that side and bring in horizontal. We just want to see the middle point on the screen. Now select this compound clip file and let's move it to the middle screen. Before we bring it to the top, let's just lock it. We can just go to this side and lock the guides on this side. Now let's just move it to the top of this very file. Now we can easily place it right in the middle of it when you look at it nicely this way. Now this is what you do. We're gonna make a compound clip once again of this very file. So let's just select that file, option or alt G to make a compound clip. Now it's gonna create the anchor point, making it drop in the middle since we created a new compound clip of that file. Now when it comes to compound clips, we're going to have some limits when we go ahead. So I can just select a freeze frame of that compound clip and delete this. It's a good practice when it comes to cup cut. Now I can just stretch it this way and bring it towards this side in the timeline. Now I want to position it exactly the same place when it's here. Let's take our player to this side when it comes in fully and let's move it and drop it on top of it. I can stretch and see exactly how it looks like. Now let's just take off the guides. We don't need it. So let's just hide it and let's zoom in so we can see what we're doing. This selected, when we move it, this is their file. That selected, I can just reduce opacity of it a bit and I'm going to move it and place it nicely on top of it. Now I can zoom out 
and I can move this file right to this side of the screen. So now we're going to play this trick like the Keza is clicking on that file. Take your player to the starting frame of it. Make sure you select that file. Then we're going to drop keyframe on transform. Now we can go two frames ahead and we can reduce the size of it. Let's just go for somewhere 95. And when you look at it, right? It's going to just reduce the size of it. But at the same time, it's going to stay at the same position compared to when we do not do the anchor point. It's going to look weird when we move it. I feel like the size, I can go all the way to 95. That's done. Now we're going to do the animation and just move it to the top. Pretty simple with cup cards. Let's go one frame after this very keyframe. Drop on transform. And I can go somewhere 35 frames and just move it to this side of the screen or if you want to move it all the way to the top here you can move it anywhere on the screen i just want to place it somewhere here place it there let's zoom in so we can see exactly how it looks like that's selected let's go one frame just like as we did over here drop a keyframe on transform then go two frames ahead and now we can take it back to 100 percent so now when you look it's gonna click on it move it and it's going to leave it on the screen. Now let's just right click on this very keyframe point. Remember, this is the one that shows the movement. Right click on it, show a preset and we can go for quad ease with that one. Now let's just close this and let's just zoom out on the screen and play and see what we have so far. Play it and it's going to have this movement and just drop it on that side. Now what we're going to do is we're going to select all this file excluding the video file and make a compound clip of it by pressing optional alt g now we're going to add motion blur to it take your player to somewhere here go to the right side and click on motion blur you can see what it's doing it's too strong so let's take it to somewhere 30 to 35 and let's just blend it in nicely on this side now when we play we're going to have this nice look in the timeline click on it and then drop it on that side now let's do the out animation we want the video to go back to the normal position so somewhere here it goes back here and then i want it to go back to the normal position so i can start with this files click on that go to transform drop keyframe on that side then we can go for 25 frames and we can drop second one on transform let's do it once more on opacity let's do it adding it to opacity 2 now we have these two keyframes take it to the second keyframe and let's just move it towards this side of the screen and let's reduce opacity of that now i can just right click show a preset and i can go for quick ease now we're going to do the same thing for the video file take your player to this side click on the video file and let's drop on scale now let's go 25 frames just like the previous one and let's just increase the size to somewhere 1112 it's going to cover the whole screen and also on the y axis let's take it back to zero and it's going to cover the entire screen now when you look it's going to have this movement right click on the second keyframe show a preset and let's just go for cubic ease you can add motion blur to the top file select that and create a compound clip of it now we can go to motion blur turn it on and take it to somewhere 25 percent now we can blend it in nicely and now let's look at the final result now if you want to know how i'm saving money when it comes to using ai tools you can check on this playlist catch you guys in the next one peace